Shalom. Um, I'm going through some scriptures here because I have an article I want to read for you brothers. And uh, as I was going through the article, the certain scriptures that came to my mind, and uh, I was going through them, putting them to the side, you know, so I could read them along with the article. And when I came to this one here in Proverbs 31, where it says, Give not thy strength unto the woman, it came up, but then it just disappeared. You know, it just disappeared. Satan just made it disappear off of uh, off of the blue of the Bible. Now, I don't know if it's going to come back or not, but I figure I'd share that with you, brother, so you can see that these demons be working hard, man, especially when you talk about the woman. So let me finish putting these uh, scriptures together, uh, reading this article on Lord's Will. Uh, I'll come back uh, to uh, share this video, uh, this, this uh, article with you, brothers, and these scriptures. Shalom. Shalom Akim, um, and the very few Akwath or sisters out there that do still listen to our GMS. Um, this is an article I found. Well, actually, I typed in, you know, on uh, on the uh, Google um, Google search engine, uh, um, women or men destroyed by women, and this article came up, and I thought it was pretty uh, interesting. Um, because I had thought about a couple of scriptures to do a lesson on um, called the uh, following the woman will get you killed, you know. And uh, this is based off of, you know, some situations that's going on <clears throat> right now in the uh, GMS camps. You know, you got certain guys out there that call themselves uh, members of GMS. They go out there uh, pretty much every Saturday. You know, curse the white man out, curse the black woman out, you know, the women of the other tribes. But when they get home, their wife straps on a dildo and goes to work on them, basically, you know. So they really ain't running shit but their mouth. You know, so there's a lot of hypocrisy going on with that. So, you know, I, I was sitting down meditating on some scriptures to put together for that for this particular lesson. And then the Spirit had me typing on, youth, on uh, Google um, on Google search engine you know men destroyed by women and this article came up so i'm gonna share this article with you brothers and um you know just so you can know um what the, this basically this was a plan by the illuminati which goes back to the uh serpent in the garden which was an actual man you know which was uh you know it had to be one of them top rothschilds or rockefellers you know in the garden coming to eve a black woman and feeding her that that poison you know but uh, this is dated January 13, 2014, uh, which is uh, actually another uh, article that was written, I believe it was in 2012, and they just, I guess, updated it. <clears throat> but this is called Illuminati Use Women to Destroy Men. Gary attended a men's group called Evolve to learn to deal with his anger. They said he needed to control his evil demon and accommodate his girlfriend. And this is how they start. They start by breaking a man down and making a man bow down to the woman. Instead of telling the woman her place and her position, they make the man uh, take the place of the woman and the woman take the place of the man. A friend was being manipulated. It was time for, inter for an intervention. It says, the mutual relations between the two sexes seems to us to be at least as important as the mutual relations of any two governments in the world. Thomas Babington Macaulay Historian and British Secretary of State for War, 1840, by Henry Macau, Ph.D. This is revised from July 12, 2010. It was actually 2010. It says, um, When I was young, there was a saying, Behind every successful man is a woman. Women used to empower men. How? By accepting their leadership, by being first mate to their captain. My mother was happy to be Mrs. David Macau and proud to be a successful scientist's wife. The Illuminati realize that this process can work both ways. Instead of empowering men, women can emasculate them by challenging their power. And that's what these women do. They challenge their power. Why? Because this is uh, what was brought up by the feminist movement. It's brought up in television. It's brought up on these different commercials. You see um, the man's always looking like a buffoon and the woman's always looking like the wise, you know, all-knowing, all-powerful, uh, the breadwinner. You know why the man is always looking basically like a woman, and that's that's the uh, the the actual um, the actual intentions of the so-called Illuminati. You know about these uh, international bankers. Um, in the book um, Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion, uh, Protocol Number Sixteen, 
one of the things that they want to do is emasculate the man, make the man take the role of a woman. And that's where you got a lot of these men out here to act like women, you know, because these devils have slowly but surely been breaking them down, you know, by these women, you know. It says, by teaching women to usurp male power, the Illuminati created a new breed of feckless males incapable of leading families and taking political action. Why? Because a man is supposed to be the one that leads the family, you know, not the other way around. But this is what happened. <laughs> This is the book of Jeremiah 31, 22. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. And that's where you see all these women being empowered, being set up into power, taking that uh, so-called leadership position or role, you know, uh, being told that they're a strong woman, you know. And there's no such thing as a strong woman. Because the Lord told uh, through, the, through the mouth of Peter, he said that we're supposed to deal with these women with wisdom because they're the weaker vessel. And the Lord made them as such. Why? Because he made the man to be strong. He made the man to be the head. He made the man to be the one that's in charge. The one that makes the decisions. The one that uh, bring, uh, brings bread to the house. A breadwinner. But these devils, what they did, they emasculated the man. And especially the black man, Latino, and Native American Indian man, to where now they reduce them to nothing. You know, they reduce them to basically to bums. You know, and they have these women to rule over them. It says, um, it says, uh, recently I saw an example of how this process works. A friend Gary was broken up because his common law wife left him. The split came after domestic assault. She became very argumentative, especially when drinking. He pushed her. She wasn't hurt, but she called the police. As a result, they were physically separated by law, and the relationship ended. I don't like this policy, but it does end a lot of dysfunctional relationships. A dysfunctional uh, couple. She had the power in the relationship. He felt resentful and angry as, re as a result. His ex had insisted that her 20-something daughter live with them in spite of Gary's objections. This daughter made uh, sure everyone was miserable if she was, which was most of the time. It was Gary's house. The woman and daughter lived rent-free. Gary had needed to be firm at the outset. Neither of you will live here. Instead, he smoldered with resentment and felt guilty for feeling this way. And that's what these women do. They try to run a guilt trip on you. Basically to break you down. And that's what a woman does, man. A woman will break you down. She will try you. She will try your power. She will tr get on your nerves. She will push buttons. And then when she breaks you, she'll leave you because she doesn't respect you. See, her job is to break you down. If you allow her to do it, she's going to break you down. And guess what? You're not, you're not going to be around, be, be with that woman no more. Why? Because that woman's going to lose respect for you. All right? Because these women do not like... To rule over a man. Even though they say that bullshit. You know they, they like that. That's bullshit. Because their makeup. Their DNA is created for them to be ruled by the man. It says. He had attended a men's group called Evolve. There it was. There, there it was all. Shame and blame the man. See. So basically there it was all shame and blame the man. And you see that in these different commercials. You know. In these different movies. They always downgrade the man. They said he needed to be more accommodating. He was so impressed that he got his ex, ex to attend the women's chapter of the same government funded agency. There and these all these agencies that, that destroy the family, they're all funded by the Illuminati, by the international bankers. There the message was desi designed to empower women. Women are an oppressed minority. Rise up against those evil males. This is typical communist consciousness raising an example indoctrination. And that's what they do. You know, they try to make it seem like the woman, she's uh, so in, in a messed up situation. She you know, feels sorry for the woman. You know, she, she's, uh, she's so downtrodden. But all, all, all the meanwhile, what they're doing is this right here. Got the man on the ground and this fucking hole walking all over him. And when it, when this is what the Lord said. This is... Uh, the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, I started the first verse. Be ye followers of me, even as I am also of Yahweh Shai. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered, to you, uh, as I delivered them to you. But I would not have you, but, I'm sorry, but I would have you know that the head of every man is Yahweh Shai, and the head of the woman is the man. 
and the head of Yahweh Shai is the Most High. So see, it says the head of the woman is the man. So a woman has no business to be in that leadership position and be having a picture like this with a woman stepping over this dickhead right here to get down on the ground like that and let her put her fucking shoe on his face, on his head like that. And that's what it, where a lot of you men are. Some of you men in GMS are like this too. Your woman runs you, man. They run, they run the household. They run you. You wear the motherfucking skirt, and they wear the pants, and they 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 got the dick, and you got the pussy, man. You guys that are like them, you better get the fuck out of that spirit, man. For the most high, fuck you up, man. The Lord ain't playing, man. You can't be having them bullshit ass men up in you know up in here having these women walking all over you, man. The most high don't play that, man. The most high is clear. So you guys that 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 got that lahab spirit to let your woman. Walk all over you, whoop your ass, you know, or, or whatever the case is, whatever's going on. You better get yourself together, fix it, fix yourself up, and get rid of that bitch. Get you another bitch. He was sorry for pushing her and thought his anger was a terrible thing. He related a Jane Good Good Goodall documentary about chimpanzees. The male chimps sometimes go haywire, screaming and yelling and throwing things. The women and children cower in fear. Then the storm passes and the males are all nurturing and welcoming again. He felt that as a male, he was like the chimps. He had this evil demon within him. But there's a reason why the, where when, when a woman chimp and the, and the children act a certain way, the male starts going haywire. And they're going to go into it. It says, Macau to the rescue. You've got it all wrong, I said. Those male chimps were asserting their dominance. Once they did that, they could go back to being loving husbands and fathers. Don't believe what the counselors tell you. You're not dangerous. A man has a right to be master of his domain. Quit beating yourself up. Excuse me, beating yourself up. And that's why the chimp went crazy. Because they, the woman and the children, they were um, testing his authority. You know, they were, they were uh, trying his authority. And, and, he, and he had to assert it. Once he asserted that authority, then everything went back to normal. And that's why men get pissed off and raise up and start screaming and yelling and ready to kick some ass because they knew deep in their spirit that they're supposed to be the head of that household. To her credit, his ex eventually moved out, but all the furniture was hers. She had forced him to get rid of his. Now he's rattling around an empty house trying to rebuild his life. He let his friendship lapse. Gary is a mild-mannered and capable 55-year-old man, but when... He related what his ex had done. His body language was that of a child. Any man who is ruled by a woman becomes a child or a woman. And that's why you don't let no woman uh, get over you, get, get over on you, or have power over you. This is Proverbs 31 and 3. And this thing keeps acting up. It says, Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. You know, so it says straight up to give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. Because women will destroy your ass in a minute, man. You know? And, it, and it, it, when I was trying to pull up the scripture, this thing kept going blank. You know, so I made it like a little side video real quick just to show you. I was kind of cracking up. I said, see how Satan is every time you get on a fucking woman, shit starts going crazy. You know? So it says give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. All right, back to the article. It says, trading power for love, not for men. You probably know someone like Gary. If you don't, get a movie called Flannel Pajamas. The writer-director Jeff Lipsky tells the story of his own marriage. Compare Jeff at the beginning and the, and the end. At the beginning, he is powerful and generous. At the end, he is a mouse. He gave away his power, and now she d didn't love him anymore. Women lose interest in men who try to buy their love or love them in a self-negating way. And that goes for, for, you know, goes for your power. You're giving up your power. That goes uh, uh, when you try to uh, give your woman uh, power over your, you know, bank account or, 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 or your finances or anything. Uh, your your uh, check at the end of the week, you, you get paid. You bust your ass at the job. At the end of the week, you cash your check and give your whole fucking check to your woman. And she rations out money to you. Man, mother, man a motherfucker that's doing that, he needs to have, have his head fucking chopped off, man. On the real. This is uh, Sirach 33 and 18. Hear me, O ye great men of the people, and hearken with your ears, ye rulers of the congregation. Give not thy son and wife, thy brother and friend, power over thee while thou livest. And give not thy goods to another, lest they repent thee, and thou entreat for the same again. As long as thou livest and hast breath in thee, give not thyself over to any, not even to your goddamn woman. 
For better it is that thy children should seek to thee than that thou shouldest stand to their courtesy. In all thy words keep to thyself the preeminence, leave not a stain in thine honor. And if we find out any of you guys in GMS is doing this shit and giving your woman your check and having your woman uh, have authority over you, man, you out of there, man. You can go join Nate and them guys over there or some of them other groups that let their woman rule over them, man. That ain't, gonna, that, that ain't supposed to be happening here at all, you know? You got the scriptures, you know what the deal is, so stop being a goddamn pussy, man. It says, um, women trade power for love. When men do it, they become feminine and women are repulsed. And that's true. Heterosexual union is about the exchange of female worldly power for male power expressed as love. Men want power, women want love. Marriage is the exchange of the two, sealed by the bond of sexual exclusivity. The Illuminati have sabotaged this exchange by exaggerating women's power and diminishing man's. Men are brainwashed to think romance and sex are, in, are the sin qua, sin qua non, which basically is a, a Latin term, sine qua non, which means something that is absolutely needed. So basically it says men are brainwashed to think romance and sex are things that are needed for happiness. Many become paralyzed, unable to approach a desirable woman. Too late, they learn the real benefits of a woman is exaggerated by a factor of five. Paradoxically, this return to reality enables a man to secure female companionship to their credit. Women are attracted to men with self-respect. Conclusion. Heterosexual relationships are about a man getting a woman to do what he wants. This is called courtship, an example proven that his aims are worth supporting and he will protect and nurture her. Because imagine you got a feminine-ass man... And some shit goes down. How's he going to protect his woman? He going to run behind his woman. Because he's been emasculated, man. And that's what these fucking devils want. They want to emasculate the man. That's why you got a lot of black men out there, Latino men and Native American Indian men, that act like fucking women, man. When he earns this trust tantamount to love, he surrenders her worldly power to him. She surrenders her worldly power to him. This is the heterosexual contract. Power for love. Of course, the contract is voided if he doesn't keep his end of the bargain. An example, love. Thus, he will consult her, depending on mutual uh, rapport, rapport and uh, competence. Power might be divided or delegated. No, power ain't divided or delegated. The man has the power. Period. Men should project power and never show weakness. That's right. They should establish their authority from the get-go. A woman can have power or love, but she can't have both. This is the litmus test. If she doesn't agree, move on. You'll save yourself a lifetime of grief. And I agree. All right. So now, this is Genesis 3 and 16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. And sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So the man is supposed to have the rule or the authority over the woman. This is First Ezra 4 and 18. Yea, and if men have gathered together gold and silver and any other goodly thing, do they not love a woman which is calmly in favor and beauty? And letting all those things go, do they not gape and even with the open mouth fix their eyes fast on her? And have not all men more desire unto her than unto silver or gold or any goodly thing whatsoever? A man leaveth his own father that brought him up, and his own country, and cleaveth unto his wife. He sticketh not to spend, to spend his life with his wife, uh, and remembereth neither father nor mother nor country. But this also you must know, that women have dominion over you. Do ye not labor and toil and give and bring all to the woman? Yea, a man taketh his sword and goeth his way to rob and to steal and to sail upon the sea and upon rivers, and looketh upon a lion and goeth in the darkness, and when he is has stolen, spoiled and robbed, he bringeth it to his love. Wherefore a man loveth his wife better than father or mother, because a woman is a man's glory, as Allah Tahar always said, the man a man loves his woman, but a woman can't love the man, because a woman is a man's glory, and not the other way around. A, a woman's glory is her hair. Yea, many there be that have run out of their wits for women, and become servants for their sakes. Many also have perished, have erred, and sinned for women. That's what the name of this lesson is called, Following the Woman Will Get You Killed. Because many have also have perished, have erred, and sinned for women. Alright, and uh, one last scripture here, Genesis 3 and 1. Because this is what the, the serpent, which is a so-called white man in the garden that had color, it was an actual man, told Eve. You know, so basically Eve wanted that power from the very beginning. But the power was given to the man. 
Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. That's why he went to Eve because he knew that Eve or the woman was the weaker vessel, which the Lord uh, power had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had the most I said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Uh, see, this, this freaking thing is acting up. It says, But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, the most I have said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. See, this is where the devil came up and actually told the woman, No, you're not going to die. It says, For the most I doth know that in the day you eat thereof, in other words, in the day that you go into this power, you, you uh, get involved with this, you try to attain that power, this wisdom, this knowledge, this understanding, on the left-hand side, basically. Then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So essentially, what did the serpent, you know, which is a devil, which is Esau, uh, back before he was Esau, uh, the spirit that was in that serpent, what did he tell the woman? Basically, he was telling her that, that you need to get power. You need to be empowered. And when you are empowered, you'll know both good and evil. You'll be as the gods. And that's what these women want. These women want power. That's why this feminist movement has been pushed. And what do these black women do? Latino women and Native American Indian women do? Especially the black women. They want to they uh, 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 run their man. They want their man to be wrapped around their finger. But then when the man is wrapped around their finger, they don't respect the man. You know? So to you guys out there in GMS, man, that you, you are allowing your woman to uh, rule over you and, and to, and to, uh, and to uh, wear the pants in the house, man, the Lord's going to deal with you, man. You either get out that spirit or the Lord's going to deal with you, man. Because th this is bullshit. You go out there every Saturday, you curse the woman out, but then when you go home, your woman is telling you what to do. You know, you're, you're wearing the skirt, she's wearing the goddamn pants. You know, you better, better, better grow a fucking pair, man. Get your fucking tail from between your legs, man, and grow a fucking pair, man. And tell and put that bitch in a place or tell that bitch to get to stepping. Alright? Like I said, the name of the title of this lesson is Following the Woman Will Get You Killed. With that, I hope those of the elect out there have uh, been edified, you know, and, and learned something. And uh to the next time I say shalom. <laughs>